Hello, everyone. I'm Armani, your modern day shaman and the author of Unmasking Your Soul, a transformational journey of truth, light, and healing. And today I have a very special guest, Pauline Kehoe. Hi, Pauline. Hi. It's wonderful to have you here. Thank you. It's so nice to be here. And before we get into the questions, I always like to read the bio of our guests. So I'll read some of your bio here and you have a chance to, uh, to let everyone know the work you're doing now. But okay. Pauline is often asked, how does she connect the invisible dots for radical transformation? What prompted her to focus on the ambitious woman? How we can all truly be incredibly wealthy and live an abundant life, rich life? how she arrived at being the go-to person among some of the most gifted people on the planet. For Pauline, it begins with a serious medical history, grave disease, hyperactive thyroid disease, and thyroid eye disease that led her to see the world and herself differently. She had two surgeries to remove her thyroid, lived life with the painful physical deformity of thyroid eye disease, and then had the lower eye sockets knocked out at 23. During the same time, her thyroid was out of balance. Pauline researched and started asking holistic questions shortly after her first surgery at 17. She's now 51 and is certain that she was under, under medicated for at least 13 years, all the while being told that she was the problem, not her medication. In 2002, after a super career in the advertising print and design world, she walked away and enrolled in the Academy for Five Element Acupuncture which is fascinating. And I hope we get to talk more about what that is for people. Okay. The five elements are now a language of hers. It's nature and it's ancient Chinese medicine. Pauline now describes her gift and herself as a translator connecting the invisible dots for radical transformation. She's been called a soul talker and wizard and is sought out by healers and those seeking answers for a better life. And there's more here, but we're going to stop there. Yeah, that sounds really long. <laughs> be able to tell people uh, what you're doing. So let's start with the question that I ask everybody, which is what is your experience with soul, your definition of soul? Well, my definition of soul right now, it's going to drop right into the five elements is the kidneys, because that's the depth of everyone's soul. It's that darkness at the depth of the water that's unknown that we're tapping into, but that's where we're all driving everything from and where we want to go. Yeah. Yeah. And interesting because uh, the kidneys, huh? The, the place where, um, for me, where I, you know, sometimes feel the, the place of resistance and I will know because I will feel some energy moving there. So we'll get to talk a little bit more about that uh, later, but let's talk about your journey, right? Because boy, you've been through a lot and experience a lot of physical stuff in your body. So can you tell us about your journey and what happened and how you got to where you are today? Uh, sure, sure. So, um, so hi, everybody. It's nice to be here. Thank you so much for the invitation, Animani. It's such a, a pleasure, a pleasure to know you. Um, yeah, so my journey, it, it's pretty intense. I mean, I seem like I was a normal kid, but I wasn't. I always felt a little bizarre and, and out of the box and alien-like. And, you know, I went through life and, and I was actually first hospitalized when I was seven. I had this bone infection that was totally weird. I was in the hospital for three weeks. And then it's, re it's related, though, in the five elements. It's all the water element. And then um, when I was about 16 and a half, and when you're at a young age, a half makes <laughs> it's a lot of time. Now it's not. But I, um, I started having a lot, of, a lot of problems, like a lot. I mean, it was just all encompassing. And I had, I had been an athlete. I competitively raced in sailboats, and I was a water polo player. And I was, I was really hardcore and a starter in eighth grade. So it's just kind of weird. And it was the early eighties in Miami. So everybody assumed I was probably on drugs. Although my dad was a doctor. So he, you know, they were seeking out so, so many things, but back then in the early eighties, they weren't looking at 16 year olds with thyroid disease. It was sort of known as the 40 and 50 year old disease. And so, but that's what I had and it doesn't run in my family. And, um, it's the version I had is called Graves disease, which is hyperactive thyroid. And, um, 
it was discovered actually um, right before my 17th birthday around then. And I had gotten strep throat and I went to my pediatrician because that's what I still saw. And I put my head back and this giant goiter popped out that must have been like the size of a softball. And yeah, so that's where it started. And um, so it was pretty dramatic. And I was homeschooled when there was nobody even knew what that was. And um, yeah, I had two surgeries that ultimately led to me having my thyroid removed, um, like three days after I graduated high school. So yeah. And, and then I got had what? you had any symptoms before about around the thyroid or? No. And of course, um, as I mentioned, nobody was looking at young women. I mean, it's interesting because the first time I remember after my, um, if, here's my scar. This is the second scar. It's in the same spot. So it's a little bit larger, but you know, you don't really notice it, but I would have women come up to me, older women be like, what did they do to you? <laughs> you know? So it's, um, a lot of people I think were mismanaged back then. And I feel like they're mismanaged now. Um, and there's been a lot um, discovered around the thyroid and it's still pretty much an unknown. Um, I am a practitioner, so I see, I see this stuff all the time and um, it affects more than your metabolism. It's your entire metabolism. When people think of metabolism, they think of weight only. Um, they don't consider the psychology, like literally it affects your psycho psychological, emotional state, your memory. Um, of course, all of your hormones. So it's really like, it's this tiny little bean shaped thing right here that runs everything. So a lot of the times women, when they're having thyroid issues, and I mean, I kind of describe it after the fact of, about like walking into a dense fog and not really knowing how I got there. And then, and then it was just really a journey to find myself again. So that's really the unmasking because then I got the thyroid eye disease, which permanently swells the muscles behind your eyes and it forces your eyeball out of the socket. So it's super dramatic. And, you know, I went through college that way and it's painful and, you know, you get pointed at and all sorts of crazy stuff. And, yeah, so I had that for like six years and yeah, I put that in my bio. I, I had, I still have it. I still have thyroid eye disease. I, um, they went up and they knocked out my, um, my lower eye sockets. Mm -hmm. So my sinuses are part of my, my socket. So some of you might be squeamish over there, I'm sorry, but yeah. So, I mean, I feel like my perspective on everything is really comes from that place of really being challenged and, and really having to seek out different things that were going to work for me because I decided that through that whole time that I was suffering with the eye um, disease, I, I was also feel like I was under medicated for 13 years. And so I was, uh, I was not at the state that I was before this started. And I don't think I've ever really quite gotten back there. And of course you age, so you don't know, but you know, it's a constant, you have to keep on it all the time and do what you got to do for yourself. So, yeah. So we this show is about you know unmasking your soul and and really stepping into a deeper part of ourselves illness you know obviously is one of those ways that many of us kind of are taken to a deeper place <laughs> they're a pivotal moment for you and and what mask do you feel you were wearing as all this was happening and you were moving forward on your journey well, I think initially when it started, my mask was that I'm okay, because when it, all of this stuff was happening, it was so traumatic for my family and the friends and stuff around me that it was like everybody wanted, I was like, I was consoling everyone else, you know, as a 16 and 17 year old going through a really dramatic thing. So I think that's the first thing. I mean, as you know, I mean, I don't feel like, I feel like I'm unmasking all the time because it's really to like do deep, more deeply know myself. And so certainly having all of these events of being such a young age took me from 16 and a half to through college and beyond slightly beyond. So really that whole first period of my life was so dramatic. And I feel like everything that I do now stems from that place. So it's, um, you know, for me, it is a constant journey to, to um, find a mask and take it off and, and to live more authentically because, I, I mean, we don't know what we know until we know it. And, you know, and we can have that perspective shift and it's like, oh, and right now, honestly, I feel like I'm in an unmasking because I'm stepping out. I just did a new brand and, and certain things like that. So 
yeah, I don't know. Did I answer your question? <laughs> so when did you get interested in the, the five elements that you do now? And you talk about how it's an ancient, uh, you know, practice. Can you, what, what was there a pivotal moment where you said, oh, I need to do something different? And yeah, I mean, I was in, I went into advertising and design. I have an art degree and I had a pretty good ride. I was living in um, Portland. And when I was living in Portland, I got into um, the holistic, more of the holistic healing where acupuncture was happening and acupressure and all that kind of stuff. And it was 1996. And so that was really consistent for me. And as I said, I, I've always felt different. I just didn't know how I, I grew up in a very Western, you know, Midwestern farm family you know, kind of situation. So it's not like being different or seeing things or whatever was, I was fostered in that. It was more like, I don't know what you're talking about, but like, you know, whatever. So I was, so I don't, I don't usually talk about any of that kind of stuff with my family and, um, at all. And so I feel like I went there and I was in, I was in the world of advertising. I started to get messages that I was killing myself. Wow. Yeah, it was pretty dramatic. And I tried to get out of the industry and actually 9-11 happened. Mm. So I, uh, cause I have a great resume in that. And I, and so I was trying to actually figure something out, but it was just then not a good time to like, to be, do something totally new. And it, so I got back in, into the design work that I was doing. And then I, I just had a really negative experience at a place that I went to and I kind of describe it you know like if you don't get the message and you don't act on it the universe will do it for you will kick you out the door yes. so I feel like I got I feel like the universe basically like body slammed me and I kind of sat there and I was like oh my gosh what am I what am I doing what am I gonna do and then i I called my acupuncturist in Portland and I said, I'm thinking about moving back to Florida because that's where my family was and that's where I grew up. And I'm thinking about going to acupuncture school. And I said, what, do you, what, do you, what are your thoughts about that? And do you have any recommendations for me? Because I love to network and get ideas from other people. And she said, well, actually there's a school in South Florida. It's five element and I had never heard of it. And it's so funny because that's the ancient medicine. It's the five elements. And, um, and she said, it's the only philosophy that you will tolerate. Mm. And that was a very profound statement from somebody who had been working with me almost weekly or biweekly, you know, bimonthly for, I don't know, how do you say it? Every two weeks or something like that for six years. So I said, okay, great. I hung up the phone. I called them and I, I said, I'd like to start next year. And they said, you could start in three weeks or next year. And I said, okay, I'll be there in three weeks. And that was it. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that, Yeah. So that was my journey into the five elements. And um, I had never had a session in, the, in that. So what, what the five elements are, it's nature. It's the, oldest, it's the oldest style of healing on the planet. And the, the oldest book is called the Book of Changes, which is the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching. Mm -hmm. And that is, um, then was created into the 64 poems, which are the Tao Te Ching by Lao Tzu. And then that's the Tao. And if we're talking about the Tao or not, it's not the Tao and that's the oneness and Taoism is not the same as what, what we're talking about. So the five elements are it's spirit based. So in the medicine that we do, it's, it's not, you're not diagnosed based on the symptoms that you have. Like I wouldn't be diagnosed on that. I have a thyroid disease. It's showing it's pointing to the water element though. So the, the five elements are wood, fire, earth, metal, and water, and it's body, mind, emotion, and spirit. So there's a creation cycle in nature. And then there's a control cycle, like water controls fire, you know, if you usually throw water on the fire and, but it means so many different things and everything in this very interconnected state. It's not like you can't put a bandaid on something. So it's, um, it's very, very deep. And then it's, we, you get diagnosed based on color, sound, odor, and emotion. And it's truly who you are. It's not your experience in the world today. So it's like really tapping in and dropping into who somebody is and then really touching them and healing them and supporting them from this very, very deep place within them. And then the result is transformation that you can witness on the outside. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So are there uh, 
common themes that you've noticed in your clients of maybe areas that they were being di uh, misdiagnosed in or that they never found, you know, no, doctors weren't able to find what they really had? Any, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, definitely. I, I usually, usually healers seek me out or people who don't know that they're healers. <laughs> like, if you just want your elbow fix, I'm not your gal. Like, go see somebody else. Like, I want to get into the juicy spirit level stuff. But yeah, that definitely, you know, when people have seen 30 doctors, then usually I get a phone call. It's nice if I get a phone call before then. Yeah. But yeah, there have been some really dramatic, dramatic cases. Did you want to hear about some? Yes. Oh, oh, you do? Okay. All right. Well, so I don't know. Well, themes, first to answer your question, an overall theme is everybody in the world is blowing out the water element. And water is life. Like your heart stops beating, it's over. You start breathing, it's over. We know that. Your kidneys start to fail and, and you really, and your water element is being depleted. And what that looks like is running around like roadrunner, drinking those energy drinks and um, pushing through being exhausted. And if that's you, you know what I'm talking about. You know, there's this place in which everything is lost, but there's, um, it's all your hormones are there and it's money, money, energy, the, the length of your life is there and the depth of your soul and all of these things. So it's like, there's, you can't just tell somebody to just stop being like that. You know, there's a, it's kind of like you need one of those lights that turn down as opposed to just, so there's an awareness that comes with it. And then it's, there's an interconnectedness with all the other four elements on a body, mind, emotion, spirit level. So that's where it gets really intense. So one of my most dramatic cases that I talk about and share, and, you know, obviously I won't mention names or anything like that, but um, it's this woman and she was an older woman. And she, um, I, I mean, I can't remember anything that's going on. This is probably like a decade ago. And she was having problems when she was going shopping and she would get to the store to go to shop and she would need to poop in her pants mm -hmm. like immediately, which, you know, when you think about that, when she was going to the doctors for the main thing, that wasn't the main thing that she was going for. I remember that she thought that people were treating her like she's crazy because they didn't, you know, that doesn't fit into any box that Western medicine has, you know, it doesn't, it's, it doesn't. And, and if you've been in the situation where you've been trying to figure out what's going on for you, if you don't fit inside the box and you know, you do start to feel like you're crazy. I mean, I felt like that I'm, I'm making a blanket statement. So a lot of people that I see and I experience are, you know, can start to wonder because if your symptoms just don't fit there anyway, so that symptom doesn't fit in. And immediately I knew what it was. So, and, um, and what was happening is, is anybody who has a chemical sensitivity or is really sensitive to smells and other things, that's the metal element. Mm -hmm. That's the lung and the colon. And so the metal element is the closest to the heavens. And so people wake between three and five around the world and meditate, which means every, every the, someone's meditating all the time on the planet earth, you know, because of the time changes, which is pretty cool. Yeah. So it's the father on all levels. It's spirit. Um, it's the lungs Our actually our largest organ system is our skin, which is the third lung. So anyway, in the colon, which is about letting go. Right. And so the point right here is the exit point of the colon, which most people would, you'd never think that it's the nose, yeah. but it is. And that point's called welcome fragrance. So what was happening and what I, you know, diagnosed it as is that she was, there was some sort of chemical smell in this store that she was shopping at that was setting off her, like, you know, so it's it basically the lungs are part, it's part what's called the Wei Qi and it protects you and your immune system. So um, there was something happening and there was a weakened state there and she would smell these chemicals and she, it, she'd have to evacuate. And of course, what had happened is, is that her life was diminished because she couldn't actually go shopping. So anyway, I think it was like three sessions. But the thing is, is like people don't need I don't I'm moving away from the needle because I don't need the needle to help people. So I don't describe myself as an acupuncturist anymore because then you have to fly here to see me. It's really like so what I do is I translate. That's why I call myself a translator. So I can talk to anybody anywhere. I love Zoom this way that we're doing it. And translate what's happening. And then I say, connect the invisible dots for radical transformation. And so if you can begin to know what's happening for yourself, you know, it's like all these things, your body's talking to you all the time. You just don't know the language because we all were given this book. We, we weren't taught the five elements. 
So it's really, you can start to connect certain things that are happening in your life. And there are only five elements. So no matter what's happening in your life on any topic, on anything, it's going to drop into the five elements. It doesn't matter if it's business or relationship or love or physical symptoms, and it's all going to be interconnected and it's going to point and show the way. And then, so people will say to me like, well, what are you going for? And I'm like, I'm going for a one degree shift in the, your spirit and your soul to help you, you know, one degree shift because yeah, that gives me the chills. Cause you know, if you're sailing one of my, I always have an, sailing analogies and, but if you're sailing to Bermuda and you're off a degree and you sail 500 miles, you're going to miss the whole dang Island. Right. So, I mean, you can think about this as a crust on the pizza if you want, if you like to bite the center. So, you know, but the angle is it's, it's, a, it's a shift and it's like the shift happens from the inside and that awareness happens from the inside. And then once you, I mean, once you just know that some of these things are connected, it's like the release and the, of pressure and confusion and scrambling and loss. Cause the worst thing in the world is when you don't feel good is to have to expend energy searching. Yeah. And that happens to so many people. Oh my gosh. Yeah. So anyway, so that was a really dramatic thing. One that I just shared, but, um, I did just talk to somebody the other day and they were having all this swelling in their face. And this wasn't actually a client of me of mine, but they were having all this swelling and, 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 the you know, the lungs are up here and they move the water mm. on the upper end. So right away it's like, okay, well that's the lungs. I was like, is there some sort of grief in your life or I don't know. There's a lot, all this metal stuff is coming up today. I also had a woman who called about her thumb hurting and I was like, did someone just die? And she's like, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know. That's a metal, that's the metal element. And there's so much more. It's not about all that stuff, but that's really awesome. Yeah. So I know you've, you know, you've launched this new brand, the ambitious woman and the summit and, uh, I know our audience wants to hear more about that because yeah. yeah so talk about how you got to launching that brand and what it's all about okay yeah so the the name is the ambitious woman and so everything's new um what i realized in in what i've been doing it's it's really been a search for a long time for me so that is an unmasking about really stepping in and knowing that the the translation piece could really help so many more people and um, the pressure of, of, of using a needle, of course, what people think acupuncture is, is, is not what it is. Mm-hmm. So, um, and figuring out who the people are that I, I work with and that I want to work with are people who actually want to have that journey from the inside and transform their life. I mean, the worst thing in the world as a healer and a coach, I'm sure you know this, is to care for more for your person than they care for themselves. You know, it's, it's really a painful experience for me personally. And if you're all in and you want to get to where you want to go, I'm 10,000% in, you know? So that's the ambitious woman. That's where she came from. And so that's not just me. That's, you know, the people that I work with and, and it can be men too, no offense, but 98% of the people who I work with are women. So, you know, you got to look at the statistics there. So, <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, so that's where the brand came from. I have a brand new website. If you jump over there, it's not .com, it's .life. Somebody wanted me to pay $2,000 for the .com, so I didn't do it. But um, it's the .life, and so that's still being developed. And the beautiful thing is, is like it seemed like a perfect time to pull together a summit. So that and Anumani. Yay. She's, she's one of the 21 interviews. It's, it's an incredible interview. And it's just like this, exactly how we're talking right now. And I have to say that it's just like anything. I mean, when I went to five element school, I did, I went to go learn something. I didn't realize it was a journey to know myself a hundred percent. It was, and it's the same thing with the summit because these interviews are so powerful I mean, I am a changed person because of it. I mean, I would recommend everyone to go out and interview 21 people about anything. I mean, really, just to be able to ask questions because it, it's not about me. It's really about talking, just like what on, we're, we're doing right now. You know, I was able to really talk to Anamani and I really wanted to share the story. And so the summit name is Eliminate What Is Holding You Back, Live a Wildly Inspired Life of Freedom and Success. Who doesn't want that? That's right. Yeah. I mean, I don't care where you are. If everything's fabulous, it could be more fabulous because we, it's not, this isn't a journey to arrive somewhere. It's like, it's a constant evolution that we have in our life. 
about awareness and, it, and you know, it spirals up and we want to continue that spiral up. So it's like, there could be, and if you're stuck, what it's a great way to like listen to 21 people so that, that they may inspire you in the way that Anumani says something may be different than how you've heard it. And then suddenly you're like, oh my gosh, you know, and, and you get that piece that you needed to have that, you know, to assurance that if you're running on a hamster wheel, you know, that you can take the dive off of it. Or, you know, there's a power, there are just so many powerful stories. And, um, and it's cool too, because my husband, I gave him projects for this whole thing. And so he listened to all of the audios and he was just like, holy cow, you know? And he's walking around with a little notepad and writing stuff down. And yeah, so this is a very interesting thing to watch it happen. So That's yeah. Right. And it starts June 4th. It starts June 4th and it's free, free. <laughs> it's totally free. Yeah, so the way that it's going to work, it starts June 4th. It's going to, there's 21 interviews through the, through June uh, 14th, the 4th through the 14th. And um, what will happen is that suddenly I was like, is that 11 days? <laughs> so anyway, so there's two um, interviews a day and they're going to be up for three days. That means up where you can actually see them. And then they come down. And we move through. And then at, at the end, on the 15th through the 18th, there's three days where they're all live again. And then if you're somebody where you're like, oh, I, you know, I want to listen to the whole thing, but, you know, I, I don't want to be on a schedule, then you can get what we call the all access pass. And you can listen to them whenever you want indefinitely. And, um, and they're going to be audios there, too, in case you're an audio person. And then if you do the, the little all access thing, you can actually download them later. So you know, and then there'll be bonuses there and stuff, but it's totally free. And uh, yeah, I uh, right, put it on your schedule. It's going to be amazing. Yeah. And I'll put the link underneath the video when we're, uh, when we're done here. So, yeah. So for those people who are wanting to start their journey of unmasking and, you know, becoming healthier, stepping in more deeply, what recommendations would you give them? Where should they start? Well, the first thing I would do is drink more water <laughs> and breathe. I mean, those are the two things that I probably diagnose the most in my practice, I swear, because people will come in and it's like, are you breathing? You know, I mean, and it means something. It's like, can you take things in? So I really recommend like, even if, so, and you know, that, that's a meditation practice too. You could just sit, even if it's for 30 seconds, just to start. Because if five minutes feels like a long time for you, it's just like that dial you got to turn up or down. But really just take the time during your day to get up and have a glass of water and take and take a drink. And then I feel like there's certain things that everybody knows that are happening in their life that that they may be having an inner conversation about needing to make a change and being aware of it. And I feel like that's the first thing is to be self-aware, but also to take self-responsibility and recognize it. So if you need help that you can actually tune in and, and transform, because I can guarantee you that your life is meant to be amazing and beautiful and so many different things. I feel like, you know, our minds and how we feel about ourselves constrict us but we're beautiful beings here to live our lives and everybody has an amazing gift and a superpower and a couple of them and we need you out in the world yes that's beautiful yeah. so if people want to contact you directly where would they go if they want to have a session or which which uh contact information would they need? um i'm just going to give you an email address because i'm working on my website so you can contact me at info at uh it's the ambitious woman dot life. That is my email address, not dot com dot life. The ambitious woman dot life. I love that. Yeah, thanks. I thought it was a good fit. <laughs> it was uh, very much in alignment. So, any last words before we close out here? Uh, no, just thank you so much for inviting me. And um, yeah, I would recommend it. come to the free summit. It's so amazing. Don't miss anybody, you know, like put it on your calendar. You can see what everyone's talking about. But I guarantee you there's going to be tons of surprises just in the interviews. And everybody's giving away a free gift. Yes. So, and that might keep you busy for the rest of the year. <laughs> it's free. So, I mean, you know, it's good stuff. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, so, well, anyway. 
it's wonderful to have you here. Thank you Thank so you. much. I'm excited about the summit and being on the summit. Yes. I invite everyone to join us there. And just reminding our audience that you are love and you are loved. And I hope to see you on the next show. Take care. Take care, Pauline. Bye. Thank you, Anamani. Bye. Bye.